Hello, Sophia here from my great challenge. I am back in my entryway today. It's actually Saturday. I was going to do this on Sunday, but we decided to push our trip to the flower show in Philadelphia to tomorrow. Stay tuned for that. It's coming up probably sometimes next week. Today, I have a lot of work to do in this particular space. Last week, you saw me paint it from dark green to bright sunny yellow, and we really, really like it. It's working beautifully. So what I'm going to do today is paint the inside of the door. I purchased a specific curtain or veil that you put over wall rather that you put on with those brackets that are magnetic. In addition, I'm going to sand and restain and polyurethane the floor. So just to give you a quick recap, this is what I did last week. I painted the entire space here and if you remember it looks much brighter at least you can see the steps so this whole area here has been painted and again we really really like it but the floor is old and needs some repair or at least um, TLC this floor we've done nothing with it since we moved in it was already kind of water damaged because you know you walk in from rainy days we don't put a rug because the dogs eat the rug so this floor here needs to be sanded down and I got my sander ready for that. And once it's sanded, I'm going to restain it the same color than the gate and it's pretty much the same color than the pocket door that goes to the kitchen. And I'm hoping it's gonna look good with the lighter color of the pantry right there. So once that's done, I'm gonna start by sanding and cleaning it nice. And after that, I'm going to paint the door here. I already washed it last week, so the surface is done. I just got to give it a nice coat of paint just to make it uh, a little bit brighter and, you know, look better, I guess. And then I'll install the uh, uh, curtain there. And once that's done, I'll be ready to stain the floor. And then I will put two coats of polyurethane. I'm going to sand in between coats. And here's the cat coming in. The life of cats. Go in, go out. Go in, go out. Hi, Vespa. We don't see her much in videos, so hold down. She knows where she's going. There you go. Bye. So I'm starting to sand now because this is really the one thing I don't want to do. I have to do it and I want to get it out of the way. So this is my regular sander. I have two types of uh, sanding band. This is actually the very smooth one. That's not the one I'm going to use first. First, I'm going to use the rough one so that I can get rid of you know, uh, paint stains that I have, the old schlack and all of that. And once that's done and swept, I will use the fine one. And after that's done, I'll do a hand sand with a um, steel wool, just to make sure the surface is really nice. I am not doing anything with these here, uh, only because I just don't have the time and I don't see the point. So I may kind of like gently rub them with the steel wool and see what it looks like if I put a coat of the um, uh, stain because there's going to be a contrast in color which is already um, existing anyway so I don't know we'll see let me get started all right so I have my sander I changed the band this is the rough one I'm just gonna go gently here very gently here on the edges because I don't want to bevel them I'm gonna do a little bit here and definitely a lot on the steps and the uh, uh, flat area I'm going to start with this area here. Let's see what it looks like. All right, so I've removed most of the uh, first layer. I'm going to go over one more time and then move on to the next one. Um, yeah, it looks pretty good. I really want to be careful here and not bevel anything. I think that once I hand sand it with the uh, uh, steel wool, it's probably going to look better. difference I still have a lot of the uh, dust on the floor I'm just gonna go ahead and um, change the uh, um, strip whatever you call it the band and go ahead and do the uh, fine grind on the wood and call it a day I mean really this floor was so damaged to begin with 
So I'm really not sure um, how much more sanding it requires at this time. It's definitely removing the first layer of shellac and that's really all I wanted for now. sanded and what I just did is uh, take a wet rag like kind of damp rag and go over the whole area to remove every single speck of uh, wood dust that's in there particularly in the corner because when I'm getting ready to uh, put the stain on and the schlack it's gonna be real nasty I'm gonna have those little grains of sand and whatever inside the uh, uh, the schlack and the stain and what ends up happening when you have all those little specks everywhere is that you have depending on how you look at the uh, shine on your floor you end up having this dullness and those little specks everywhere so I'm trying to do as clean of a job as I can this is not the best sanding job I've ever done but you know what after I put the color and the schlack on it trust me it's gonna look much better than what it was before so now I'm just gonna go ahead and paint the door and for that I'm using the Rostalian Painter Touch Ultra Cover this is the same one I used for my old vanity upstairs this is a high gloss high white super easy to uh, roll onto the door I'm not gonna sweat it I'm just gonna do the edges you know like the bars and stuff and give it one coat that's it and then I'll be ready to install the curtain so for the doors I'm using um, the regular brush it's the same one I had last time by the way for the yellow I just cleaned it uh, and I'm gonna do the paint I have a roller as well, but I'm going to do um, those parts where the roller doesn't go in first, so which is this. And from far, I don't think you can see the difference in color, but this door is actually off-white and I am painting this a bright white. So it's going to really, however subtle, it's going to brighten up the space a little bit more so i'm doing the inside first of those frames making sure i get in all the grooves right and i'm going here all the way to the edges because this part here i'm going to do with the roller and the only reason why i'm doing this is because i really um i'm trying to cut time and also i don't want to have too much brush strokes because this particular paint here is very thick so what happens is that when you have a brush and depending on how you do it, you're going to have brush strokes and I don't want that. I want it to look as neat as possible. So again, just doing this and I'm only doing one coat guys. I don't think I need to, I'll see once it's done whether or not I do need a second coat. Turns out that this paint actually evens out really nice on the uh, metal part of the door. So if I brush, you know, up and down and sideways or whatever, it's not leaving streaks. I'm happy about that. However, the paint, um, I guess because the door is still a little bit cold, because you know it's still March here. 
after a while like when you go over a second time it starts um, clumping so you just got to do a quick one coat I'm going to do a second coat I said I wasn't but I'm going to do a second coat so I'm letting it dry right now and Scott was doing the deck you probably saw that he was kind of throwing water all over the door on the other side and some water seeped through so that means I have to redo the seal I thought the seal was good and that's probably one of the reasons why we have so much damage on this wood at the seal itself because there's water coming in so eventually I'll redo the seal sometimes in the next video I guess when I do the outside because I have to do the outside of the door too I'm not just gonna do the inside I'm gonna do the outside we decided we're gonna paint it red um, the door the the house itself is gonna get recited eventually in blue at some point <laughs> probably within the next year we don't know yet you know it's fonts I right? so it's gonna be done and the front door will be red too so that way I can kind of mess around with the kind of red that I want and I have to redo the frame around it too because there's some water damage on the wood at the base so I don't know if I'm gonna redo the frame itself or just repair the wood for now because when the house is getting recited that can be recovered as well probably with aluminum or whatever siding plastic they use now um, anyway so the doors got to dry and while this is drying I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I purchased as a curtain and curtain rods so we're in the dining room um, this is the curtain that I purchased this is a style master elegance voile for a door panel you see that okay I'm gonna have to iron it and then I purchased two of those magnetic rods and realized that you can actually put them on the fridge you see they have um, them right here on the fridge you can put them on the side of your washing machine as well in addition to the door so there's one for the top and one for the bottom to hold the curtain both ways but I purchased another two of these they're kind of cheap they're like seven dollars each and I'm gonna see what I can do with them if I put them in front of the uh, washing machine for some a towel rack or maybe I can put one on the fridge and with hooks hang some little cup containers for pans and things like this just to kind of declutter I don't know maybe it would look cool maybe I can put plants whatever so I have two coats looks pretty okay to me I'm ready to install those so these you can see are magnets and the door is metal so basically you can put it anywhere you want on the door and I'm gonna do that I've got to uh, it's kind of complicated because uh, I'm not sure I'm not sure if I want to remove it to put the curtain so for this particular one I'm going to install the curtain on it first and I ironed it already I should have removed the uh, label and then just put the other extension here and here we go so uh, I'm gonna put it a little bit higher and like this and it does um, it's definitely a serious magnet so it goes like that and then the other one will go uh, right here at the bottom so it's uh, it's pretty it's diffusing the light I kind of like it I don't know if you can really tell because you are backlit uh, you can still see through I'm gonna show you once I've installed um, the whole curtain I'm gonna show you what it looks like from the other side and that's installed um, I think it looks better Scott likes it too the only problem is that you have the bar here at the bottom and it's kind of like in between the two locks but what are you gonna do okay it's just it is what it is so from the other side that's what it looks like so you really can't see anything wow you can't see anything from the other side so this is great this is a, a good security thing and you can definitely see my little um, security monitor thing and then while I'm here I'm going to show you what this looks like you can tell that the uh, frame that's around the entire door here needs to be redone so I'm gonna scrape all of that next weekend and at the bottom here I do have some um, wood damage it's not too bad I think that putty will do it a good coat of paint on it and like the door itself like I said we're going to paint it um, in red so I'm very happy because if anyone comes to the back you can't see what's going on on the other side and that's really the reason why I wanted to do this so I'm ready to stain and the color I have is this Minwax. It's the leftover I got from other projects that I've done. This is Gunsmoke 231, Penetrate Stains and Seals. I, I'm still going to do polyurethane. Um, unfortunately, I don't think I have enough. I have a half a can. 
I don't think it's going to cover it. So I'm probably going to have to go to the store at some point. Now the issue is we can't have access to this area anymore, at least for the duration of the project. So I'm going to start working from over there to here so I can get out and then do the same thing over for second coat and because I'm going to put two coats. And then I'll do the same thing again when I do the polyurethane. The polyurethane I'm probably going to do tonight so it dries overnight. Um, that makes sense to me because that's really something that's going to like totally block the area. Scott went to the supermarket and I already texted him that he has to take the front door when he gets back. So um, I'm going to start in that corner over there. I'm hoping you can see. Um, I'm not going to do close-ups or anything. And whoop, I have a glove because otherwise I'll have the stuff everywhere. And I'm just using like an old rag that I have. Um, it's like an old t-shirt from the kids. Just dip it in there. I'm going to squeeze a little bit and go straight into the corner and start putting that color in. And very obviously I'm going to have to put some on here as well. I'll do that in a minute. have one coat of the stain and I'm pretty happy with the way it looks it matches perfectly the rest of the wood um, it really does there's some areas where it's a little bit dark I'm going to assume it's parts where there were damaged and I didn't sand properly but once I put a second coat and I got the shine from the polyurethane I don't think it's gonna show as much um, the door the gate here is still open but um, once it's you know all dry and stuff I'll show you what it looks like in this area with the door closed I'm pretty happy with the results so far I'm really liking it it looks bigger it looks brighter it looks cleaner I really like the curtain and the fact that you can't see through so this project is coming along pretty good um, I'll see you in a second when I put on the second coat and then I'll start the polyurethane let it dry smooth it with the uh, um, fine steel wool and then apply a second coat Okay, so I'm ready to do polyurethane. I was going to go to the store and uh, buy a new one, but you know what? I still have some. This is Rustalium Ultra Cover Gloss Clear. I'm just going to use this, see how much I have. I may have enough, I don't know. I got a regular uh, synthetic brush. Now when you do polyurethane, there's certain rules. One, you do not shake the can because the last thing you want is to have bubbles. And then when you dip your brush, you just want to dip it um, about three quarter of the way and you tap it gently like this you do not rub your brush against the edges again that's to avoid bubbles and you just go within the grain all right just like this So here's one coat of polyurethane and you can see it's still wet so it's shiny but eventually it's going to get absorbed. 
most of it in the wood. I'm going to let it dry and sand it lightly with the steel wool and then I'll put one last coat. To be honest, I think I have enough left. So I'm going to just let this in there so it can stay wet while it's drying. It's probably going to take about 40 minutes and then uh, lightly sand it again. And the fine steel wool will do it. I'm really, really liking it. This looks much better than what I had before. So this is dry and I'm just going to go ahead with my steel wool and I'm going to go over the whole area. And what I want to do is create a little bit of a grit for the next layer to go on smoothly on it and I will be done for the day. I'm done for today. I have two coats of polyurethane. The second one is still drying right now. This, this is what it looks like. Um, you can see oh, lots of shine going on here. Let me tell you, this floor looks so much better and it's so much more inviting here. Now, there's some little spots where it's a little bit duller than others. I don't know if you can see. Um, I'm going to assume it's just because of the way the wood is. I'm not going to put a third coat. I could, I could totally do that. I just don't feel the need. This is just an entryway. This is not like main floor or anything. And to be honest, it's probably gonna have to get done every year or every other year because this is the back door. Or that's the one we use all the time. I'd like to put a rug. I mentioned earlier the dogs chew on them. So I don't know, unless I can get a kind of rug that really is not one they can chew. It would be nice, you know, just to wipe feet and everything. We could do that outside as well. I don't know, I gotta think about it, but for now it's done. Listen, it's a small project. It really didn't take that long, uh, about five hours altogether, and most of it was waiting time for the stuff to dry, but it really does make a big difference. I mean, this is the area that you see when you come in. As soon as you come in, that's what you see. So, you know, it just want, I just want it to look good, basically. So, next week I will do the um, outside of the door, and then I'm thinking about doing something with the walls. I'm gonna do some, um, just a little ledge shelves thing. They look like little L's, not thick. They're just gonna be about maybe two, three inches, just enough to put frames on them and make a selection of very nice pictures and artwork that we like. Just to kind of like, you know, give a little bit of a whimsy feel to the area, but really no coats, no bags, nothing, nothing on the floor. I don't want a basket, nothing on the floor. So this is done. You let me know down below what do you think. Do you like the way it's progressing? Um, do you like the color of the wood? I mean, I'm trying to match as much as I can the environment here so it does have a continuous feel or, you know, at least it ties in together. Um, so let me know down below. Give me a comment. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe if you're new. And I guess I will see you next week to do the outside of the door. Remember, tomorrow we're going to the Philadelphia Flower Show. It's the last day and the butterfly experience. So I'm going to do a video on that. Stick around to see that. Subscribe to the channel. Don't forget so that way you'll get to see it. And I guess I will see you later and talk to you later. Bye.